Hey everybody, today I want to talk to you guys about Markdown, converting it into a PDF without installing LaTeX. Now finally, if you guys are interested in this and you want more videos involving Pandoc, uh, involving Markdown, involving any of these cool tools, make sure to like this video, subscribe, click the bell icon so you guys can get updated on more videos that come from me, and leave a comment below and tell me what you guys are interested in in the future. Markdown right now is one of the most popular markup languages, mostly due to its simplicity and how it's been integrated into GitHub and GitLab for readmes and other documentation. One of the most powerful tools for converting Markdown into different formats such as HTML and into a PDF like we want to do today is Pandoc. Now using Pandoc to convert Markdown into a PDF is pretty sweet, but it comes with some drawbacks usually. One of the most common drawbacks is if you want to convert into a PDF, you often have to install some version of LaTeX, which will often take up multiple gigabytes of storage and isn't quite the fastest very often. An alternative exists using HTML um, and then different programs such as WheezyPrint that can convert HTML into a PDF. So Pandoc can just convert the markdown into HTML and then uh, WheezyPrint will convert that HTML into a PDF. Now this also comes with its own trade-offs because most of these uh, tools rely on a lot of external dependencies that can be quite large and while the tools themselves on their own are not very large, they're usually less than a gigabyte, the dependencies they have are often much more than that. Now thankfully there is one more alternative which we'll be talking about today. This alternative is known as Groff. For those of you that are probably asking yourselves what even is Groff? Well, Groff is basically what you probably are using right now if you're using Mac OS or Linux to view your uh, man pages. And it's used for a bunch of different stuff. It's basically a general markup language that can be converted into HTML. It can be converted into a PDF. It can be converted into a bunch of different things. If you're more interested in learning about Groff, look at some of my tutorial videos on this. Using Groff with Pandoc to convert a markdown file into a PDF is actually quite awesome because you get the advantages of it's fast, a lot faster than pretty much all of the other tools. And it's also much smaller. It doesn't have many dependencies and the install is less than half of a gigabyte in most cases. Some systems it may be more than that, but we'll cover that in a sec. Now for installing uh, Groff, if you're using Linux, you most likely have Groff installed. If it is not installed, it's probably in your package manager. And if you're running one of the BSDs, it is in your package manager as long as it's one of the mainstream BSDs. I looked in most of them and they all have them available in their repositories. Now, if you're using Mac OS, you actually have Groff installed already. However, the catch is that it's an older version of Groff that most likely doesn't work properly with uh, Pandoc, last I checked. Luckily, you can use tools such as Brew to install the latest version of Groff and get right into what we're going to be talking about today. Now for Windows, there are versions of Groff that exist, but I haven't worked with them and I'm not too sure if they're supported by Pandoc because I haven't used them recently. But if you guys use Windows subsystem for Linux, um, which I recommend you look into if you guys are using Windows and you want to work with a bunch of Linux tools, I recommend you look into that. But if you use Windows subsystem for Linux, then you should be able to install Groff without any issues. And finally, we have Android. Yes, that's right. You can even install Groff on Android using a program called Termux. And I'll probably cover this in a future video if you guys are interested. Let me know in the comments below. Uh, same thing goes with Mac OS. There's some tricks to get the current version of Groff working, but it's kind of hacky. It's not perfect. So let me know in the comments below if you guys want me to show a video on that. Now, before I go scaring all of you guys away, I just want to show you that pretty much everything that you can do in Pandoc normally, um, it actually works properly with Groff. So for example, like I said, like I'm gonna be showing in a second, headings work, lists work, code blocks even highlight properly, which is pretty awesome. One of the major drawbacks though for images is that you have to convert them from whatever format they're in into a EPS file, so an enclosed postscript file. And I'll explain that uh, later on in the video. It's not very difficult. But then once you do that, it inserts the picture properly and it will give it even the right label. Tables also work properly. I'm not really too happy with the format for it, but I think there is a way to change that. And then even math works. And if you look, you'll see that the code that I'm using here is actually still using LaTeX inside of it. So Pandoc can actually translate that. And I'll also be showing off in the video how you guys can use a lot of Groff's features. So you can use the way to do math in Groff using EQN, and you can create very complex tables using TBL. I'll be covering that in just a sec, but you can do pretty much everything you'd need to. Just to give you guys a really quick primer on how to 
write markdown and have it work well with pandoc so using all that math and everything that i was using just a second ago so here's how you're going to do it so you're going to give it a header using one pound sign or hashtag for those of you that want to call it that and then two pound signs or hashtags to denote a subheading and then lists are basically just a dash before or a number to do a numbered list code blocks are you do back tick back tick back tick and then the language if there's no language it will just make it a monospace type but uh you can say the language and then pandoc will actually highlight it appropriately um, so this is just a really quick bit of C code in between these uh, back ticks. So for images, typically how it's going to work is you're going to have the original version, which is this one, that won't work because it's a PNG file. So to convert it to an EPS file, all you guys have to do is use image magic. If you guys want to know more about image magic, I recommend looking into it. It's an awesome tool. It allows you to convert between a bunch of different formats. You can do image editing with it. You can do a lot of really cool stuff. But today I'll just be showing off converting it into an EPS file. The way you do it is you don't worry about the exclamation mark. You're doing convert, and then the original image, and then the outputted image that has to end with .eps. When I run that, it creates the EPS file. And then instead we can just replace this PNG here, EPS, and it should work properly. Now for tables, it works just like normal. You guys can put all the same sort of stuff in and use all the same pandoc and markdown formatting that you would normally use. Like I mentioned before, the math actually goes inside these uh, dollar signs. So bash neg is how I get the negative sign. Bash lore is where I to get a logical or. Backslash left right arrow is how I get left right arrow. And so all of this, like I showed before, actually translates properly and you can get math inside of your markdown without even having to install LaTeX, which is pretty awesome. Let's move on to how we can extend this using Groff's features. All right, so right now we just have an empty markdown file. So let's create some headings. So we can do hashtag heading here. Uh, and then we can create some text. So this is some text. And then we can do star star sub heading. So now let's just see how we can compile this without using LaTeX at all and using Pandoc along with Groff to produce the markdown, to produce the PDF. So the way you guys are gonna do this is just like normal Pandoc, you're gonna do Pandoc, and then you're gonna give it the file. And then usually you do dash O, and then the output. So we'll do temp.pdf. Now some extra stuff that you have to add in if you wanna use Groff for this, because if I tried to run this, it would try and use LaTeX. But if I do, if I go back and I do dash T, MS and we just run this. Now if I do now if I open that up, we'll see that we have a PDF file that we created using Groff. Now because of this, you can actually leverage some of Groff's features. Let me show you really quick how you can do that. So what you're gonna do is you're basically going to uh, use this. You're gonna do back tick, back tick, back tick, and then in curly braces you're gonna do equals MS, which tells uh, Pandoc to basically give this as a direct MS input if that makes sense. You guys will understand what I'm talking about when we see the output. So in here, I'm actually gonna create a new heading. So let's do NH for new heading. This is a MS heading, All right? And so now if we compile that and we open that up, we'll see that we created a new heading, heading, but it actually has a number because in this case, we're actually using MS's own uh, heading macro which is pretty awesome. This allows us to do some pretty cool things. So for example, at the very top of our file, let's create a title. So we can do .tl, uh, this is a T-I-T-L-E. And then if we compile that, we actually created a title using just MS. We didn't have to do any extra work using YAML or anything like that, which is pretty awesome. Now, another thing you guys can do is you can leverage Groff's uh, TBL preprocessor. If you wanna learn more about Groff's TBL preprocessor, I recommend you watch my other video up in the card above. And so here we're going to do .ts .t -t -t -e, and then we're going to do uh, all box uh, tab bracket bar bracket um, colon semicolon and we're going to go ccc dot this is a t a b l e and so now when we compile this it will actually insert an ms table and so we can do stuff like tell it to center we can even do things like for example if I wanted to do like create like a nice little um, header, I could do header and there we go. Now we added a little header and we can leverage everything that we can do with TBL 
in Groff, we can do here, which is really awesome because you can do some really complex tables and a lot more manipulation than you really can with tables in Markdown. Now, another thing I want to cover is using pick, which actually can be done using um, Pandoc as well. So let's do ps.pe and let's just do box. All right. And so if I compile that, we'll get a box. But in order to actually make this work properly, you need to add one extra option. So now you can add dash dash PDF dash engine dash opt equals dash P. Now, if I compile that, we could get the box. If I did this, but I didn't include that extra option, here's what we would get. We would just get box because in this case, Markdown or Pandoc doesn't really actually know what to do with this. It needs to have the preprocessor run. Anyways, guys, that was a really quick introduction. Thanks for sticking through the video, guys. I hope you all learned something new. If you learned something new from this, feel free to give me a like down below. And make sure to leave a comment telling me what you guys want me to cover in the future. Subscribe for more content like this. And click the bell icon like I mentioned at the beginning. Thanks for sticking through it, guys. And I hope you have a great day.